On today's show, we are reaching for the stars and we're blasting off right now. Hey, welcome to The First Layer. My name's Richard. This is the show that explores the world of 3D printing. And today is no different because we're going to do something fun over the next few episodes. We are building ourselves some rockets. Now, I haven't flown rockets since I was maybe 12 years old. And that's been a long time ago, as you can tell by the weight in my beard and in my hair. Um, so I reached out to my friends over at PM Hobbycraft and asked them if they could give me some pointers and maybe get me set in the right direction about what model rocketry was all about today in 2020. Um, so what they did was they hooked us up with a... Alpha 2 or an Alpha 3 launch kit. Uh, this comes with everything that we need. We're going to open it up. Uh, we are planning on 3D printing our rockets. This is a 3D printed rocket that I found online on Thingiverse. I'll link to that down below. We're going to talk a little bit more about this as today's show goes on. Uh, they hooked us up with our rod that we need for our launch rod because we're going to 3D print our own launch bay as well for our 3D printed uh, rockets. Now, I've challenged Brian to come up with his own 3D printed rocket, and we've got a place set up that we can take these out to and launch them off, and that's going to be in a later episode when we both have our rockets done and ready to go. We've got ourselves our blast shield for our rocket to go on our homemade uh, launch stand. They hooked us up with some shock cord from the Estes company. Now all of the parts that you see here today all come from the Estes. It's Estes company. And these guys have been doing model rocketry for over 60 years. PM Hobbycraft here in Calgary is a uh, family owned business and it's been a family owned business for many, many, many years. And is one of the province's oldest toy and hobby shops. So if you are looking for anything to do with hobbies, uh, including 3D printing, because they do sell filament and printers as well, check them out today at pmhobbycraft.ca and just go and have a look. Uh, I'm also going to, we're going to have a look at their website a little bit later on in the episode because I want to show you some stuff related to model rocketry that they have on their site. So this is our shock cord. What this allows is for our nose cone to come off and stay intact with the rest of our uh, rocket. We've got some parachutes. Um, these are the 12-inch parachutes that we're going to be using on our homemade rockets. And we have this wonderful kit. So let's switch cameras and I'm going to open up the kit and show you exactly what comes inside if you're thinking about getting into model rocketry. All right, so we're going to examine really quickly what comes in a kit if you're getting into model rocketry. And first and foremost, uh, we have this box here. This is again from the Estes Company. Uh, you guys can see it there. This is from the Estes Company. This is the Flying Model Rocket Launch Set. This rocket can achieve up to 1150 feet in flight. It tells you the type of engines that, that come in the package. Um, this is a, a really good little box. Uh, what it tells you here is it uh, gives you some launch details and also tells you what type of engines that you're going to have to buy for your 3D printed rocket or the rocket that's inside of here. And on the back, you can see it comes with everything that we need, the rocket, the launch stand, the controller, the whole nine yards. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what we get in comparison to the one that we've 3D printed. So inside the box, we get what looks like a set of plastic fins, which is not dissimilar from the fins that we've printed on the uh, LotMax SC10. Now we use the LotMax and we are using filament from our good friends out at filaments.ca. This is the black or the EcoTuff black. Uh, so this can be annealed, uh, which is really kind of nice. And we'll talk about annealing in a later episode, but these are plastic. So I have nothing to worry about here with my plastic pieces. So we'll just set that aside. Let's kind of pull these out, I guess, as we as we grab them. So there's our rocket fins. Boom, right there on the table. This is our launch rod. So we're just gonna put that off to the side right now. We're not gonna build the launcher today. You can see it's got one of those 
steel plates in it. Uh, there's all the legs. We're going to 3D print our own launcher. Um, and uh, we're going to 3D print the control box as well. But let's get into the heart of the rocket here. Inside this bag, you're going to find everything that you need uh, to get your rocket started. So we're just going to open this up using our handy dandy little knife. We find that there's uh, an instruction kit here, both in English and in French, I believe. Oh, there's one for the for the rocket itself and one for the launcher. Okay, so we're going to have a look at the uh, the ones for the rocket itself. So as we can see here for the rocket itself, it tells us exactly how to put it together. has everything that we need. Um, we're going to need a pair of scissors and a little bit of glue, but that's no big deal. So we're going to just set those off to the side for a second. Let's have a look at some of the components here. So we have a cardboard tube which is about six inches long. And then we have a plastic uh, injection molded nose cone. So again, not dissimilar from a plastic nose cone that we've printed. Only ours is a little bit more pointy. There's a little bit more blunt. So we're going to pop that back together and set that off to the side. So this looks like it's fairly easy to put together. You just kind of slide that on there. Slide your nose cone on. And there is your rocket. Now, if we look at the rockets kind of side by side, I know they don't quite fit in the frame, but if we look at these side by side, we can see that the rockets themselves are a little bit different in terms of their overall length. But as far as the rockets themselves go, they both will take the same size engine. So let's just put those guys right there, stand them up. Oops, mine doesn't stand up so well on. I think I need to print a stand or something. There we go. That's better. So inside here, you're going to also get all the things to build your engine compartment. Um, and this is what your engine is going to slot into. And you've got your shock cord in there and all the little goodies that you'll need. There is some decals in here for your sexy rocket. And you've got your parachute as well. So there is your parachute with all your lines already attached to it. So putting together one of these is not very difficult at all. If we take a look at the instructions, we know that uh, it's pretty simple. Um, just based on these instructions right here, it is pretty simple to do. And it doesn't look like it's going to take a whole lot of effort to get done. So this is the Alpha 3. And now we can see these two rockets side by side. Hopefully this one doesn't fall over again. And there's a little bit of a height difference in them. So you're asking probably at this point, well, how are we going to get these into the air? Well, our fine friends over at PM Hobbycraft also supplied us with a box of engines. And I want to stress some safety here before we go any further. Before you go and start building rockets, please check out your local um, safety organizations that surround this type of hobby. Uh, I'm going to link to something that uh, you should follow for Canadians. Look up the rules in the States or across the pond, wherever you may be in the world, if you're playing with rockets. Now, Estes, as I said, has been around for 60 years. Uh, they've been making model rockets and all kinds of great things. Rockets have not changed since I was a kid too much. Um, their rocket here uh, now has plastic fins, which... When I was a kid, this was this cardboard tube was all one piece. So it would have been, if I remember this right, it would have come from there all the way down to the bottom. And you would glue balsa wood fins on. Now, I know there's still kits out there that are like that. Um, and this kit is, is just a little bit different. It's made for beginners. And believe me, we are beginners right now. Uh, we're back to the beginning stages. Um, so... What we're going to do is I'm going to build two rockets here and uh, I've got a little bit of footage of one of the other rockets that we printed um, that we're going to take a look at the time lapse right now. Now you can see as this is building up, it's not a very big rocket and it has several parts to it. The fins are separate and uh, it has to be put together and we will do that. Now this rocket's kind of small. It doesn't quite fit the launch tube we've already, or the launch gantry wire. We've already found that out. So we're going to have to do something a little bit different. 
but it looks great. It's, uh, I guess it'll fly. I hope it'll fly. Um, you'll need a little bit of CA glue for that. But in this case, you're going to need just a little bit of uh, yellow glue, um, some scissors for this type of rocket, if this is the way you want to go. But if you want to have a little bit of fun, go ahead and download a rocket like this. This is based on an old Estes design. Uh, we're going to bring it up right here now. As you can see, this rocket is basically four parts. There's the nose cone, the uh, parachute connection point, the body, and the uh, engine mount housing here. So this rocket, very easy to print. It only took about four and a half hours to print. So you can print a ton of these uh, with very varying success, I would imagine. Um, now, the one thing that I did find with this particular rocket is it's very loose. So the nose cone doesn't fit uh, very tightly. So what we're going to probably do is just wrap a little bit of tape around there um, just to give it a, a little bit of a tighter fit. Now, when you're dealing with rockets, because again, as I said, these are flammable. Basically, this is a black powder charge. Um, so you want to, if you're doing this with your children, and I hope that you do. You want to follow all of the safety rules that are involved with model rocketry. It's very important that you do that because these can cause some serious damage if you don't know what you're doing. So read all of the safety instructions. Read the instructions on how to put these into your rocket, how they should be set, and away you will go because this will make, um, you know, that safety will make things much better for you in the end. Now, Inside a pack like this, this one gives us 24 rockets, so we've got a lot that we can shoot off, but they're varying sizes. Um, I'm going to link down in the website or down in the description below a website where you can go and get an explanation of what all the different types of engines are for your rockets. Um, in this case, we have A's, some B's, and a couple of seats style engines. They're good for up to 24 launches. Um, my understanding is that each one of these letter codes determines kind of the power that each one of these has. Some of them might be a quicker takeoff. Some of them might be a slower takeoff. Um, it'll also determine the height in which it is going to go. Uh, that's what all these codes mean. But in a case like this, you get the engines, you get the igniters, and you also get the little plugs to keep the igniter in, in, uh, in place. And then inside this pack, you're going to find all of your things to build your launch pad. And the launch pad is very easy to assemble uh, in this case. They make this stuff so easy to do. And when I was a kid, it was, you know, you found cardboard tubes. You saved them from whatever you could. So you hoped your mom didn't throw stuff out. And if she did, you hope that you'd get it back so that you could make your own rocket stuff. Um, but nowadays, because we've got 3D printing, and that's what we want to test is how good does a 3D printed rocket and launch system work uh, in comparison to something that you can buy retail. Now, these kits aren't very expensive. Um, a kit like this that we've got here retails in Canada for about $45. Um, getting into it is another feat uh, altogether. <laughs> I'm having a hard time getting into this bag. There we go. So the launch system, again, is all injection molded plastic. We've got the legs here. We've got the center. This packet right here is our launch controller. We're going to talk about that at a little bit of later date. Um, but putting this together is very, very, very simple. Uh, we're just going to take off the tape here because it's got some things that we need in the bottom. And we'll go ahead and put this together. Now, I know you're expecting a lot more 3D printing today, but what we want to demonstrate to you is how you can go from, you know, something that you would buy at a retail location to, you know, kind of MacGyvering something on your own and making it work for you. Now, the launchers that we found online, Brian and I both found online, um, don't have some of the uh, 
nice things that these ones have. This one, it's all injection molded plastic, as you can see. It has a little nut here that you can adjust the angle of the wire that goes inside so that you can adjust it into the wind and so on. Here's a little cap that goes on top of the, of the wire. We'll just use this wire that we have here right now. Just open that up. You can put two different size wires in here, depending on the type of, of uh, unit that you're using. In this case, this is a 1 8 inch stock from KNS. Um, it's a, just music wire. And we can just adjust that so it looks like it's straight. There we go. So really, there's nothing to putting these together. And if you do go ahead and buy some pieces commercially, like we did, It is, there you go, quite easy to do. Make sure that little cap is on top. There we are. So that is how the stand goes together. There's nothing more to it than that. Um, now all you got to do is just put your rocket on it. Like this. And away you go. Let me just see if I can get this rocket on here. We'll get this little piece of... Uh, Tape off here from KM. There we go. And we'll slide our rocket down on top of it. We're almost to the height of the studio here. So there we go. That's how that sits on there. We want to make sure we got a little wire on there or a little topper so we know that we're ready for launch. We don't have an engine in there now. I'm going to show you the engines here in uh, a little bit more detail. But having a system like this is very easy to use. Now, we, as I said, we're going to print a base like this for ourselves. We do have an extra plate that was provided to us by our friends over at PM Hobbycraft. Uh, we have an extra chute for this one. We also have the, the shock cord. Um, the only thing that we don't have is, of course, right now we don't have the base, but we're going to print one off. And we don't have another launch controller. Now, these launch controllers take batteries. There's a little safety key for them. So you can't start these without. We're going to make something a little bit more um, involved, I think. Uh, we found some, some Thingiverse uh, plans, and we're going to build our own little launcher. We will use this one with the launch um, or with the uh, rocket that we have here. And that is pretty much it in a nutshell. Now, once Brian gets his done, we are going to uh, go ahead and take these out to a, an undisclosed location. And we're going to find a good day to do it. And we're just going to set off these rockets and uh, have some fun and bring you guys along for the ride. We want to see if our... PLA rockets hold up. We'll be printing these in both PLA and, and uh, uh, PET-G. It is recommended that you print these in PET-G. Um, but uh, hey, this one's printed in PLA, so we're going to try that too. Now the rocket engines, let's just uh, switch cameras here right quickly. The rocket engines look like this. Now this is the box that they come in. You can buy them in smaller packs. You don't have to get a pack this big. I think you can get them in three packs. They come with these little plugs, which go into the bottom of the uh, engine once you put your igniter in there. I'm going to see if we can find the igniters in this box. Uh, there we go. Okay, so here's the wadding. Now, wadding is very important, and we'll talk about that in a second. These are igniters. You can see them here. All they are is just two little leads that go up to a, almost like a match coating. Um, and they will send enough of a burn to the engine itself to allow the engine to uh, ignite and fire off your rocket. Now, again, there's different sizes of engines in here. I don't know what they are. Um, but it is important that you, you do take a look at 
what the engine is for the rocket that you're using. Now, I believe that this A83 is probably the shortest and smallest engine that we've got in here. You can see down in there, there's a lot of space. If we compare that to uh, one of the other ones that we had here, the C6 or B64, you can see, uh, maybe you can't see that, but you can see that they're about the same size and diameter, but at the end of the day, this one has a little bit more of a charge in it uh, to um, set off your rocket. Now, wadding, which is this stuff, which looks like tissue paper. This is important because wadding helps to prevent your parachute from burning. When these motors eject, and I'll put up a, a little screen here that'll show you what the inside of one of these looks like. There's a clay cap here, then you run into your uh, propellant. Then as that propellant burns, it burns into another stage uh, before it blasts the cap out. And when it blasts the cap out, um, what that's doing is it's causing back pressure in the rocket itself and allowing the nose cone to be ejected off. Okay? So that's allowing the nose cone to be ejected off. Now, what you want to make sure of is if you don't have this wadding, uh, what you can do is burn your parachute. And if you burn your parachute, you're going to wreck your rocket. And that's not something that we want to do because then your fun would be over real quick. And that's not something that, that's uh, good to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and build these rockets. I'm going to leave some pictures up on our Instagram. We'll have some on our Facebook and on our Patreon as well. Patreon will get a few different ones and we're going to go ahead and build both of these rockets. We're going to get ours looking pretty snazzy. Okay, so here we are on the PM Hobbycraft website and if you go ahead and type in Estes or rockets, you'll get uh, quite a few uh, search hits. But if you go over to their blogs and just click on their blog, you'll see that the very first one there is getting started in model rocketry. I'm going to use this as a primer because I think that this is a great way to get you involved in the hobby of model rocketry as part of your 3D printing experience. And this is something that you can do as a full family. Now, in here, you can see that um, there is the anatomy of a model rocket. There's a great little write-up. Uh, there's some Estes uh, photographs here. And here's that cutaway that we were talking about earlier. And as you can see here, we have uh, the clay nozzle. Then we have the rocket propellant, then a delay charge, then the express charge or the ejection charge, pardon me, and then a little bit of clay right there. And this is exactly what the anatomy of a model rocket is. So definitely uh, read through here. If you are in Canada, I want you to go down to the Canadian Association of Rocketry Safety Code down at the very bottom of this page. And this is going to bring up this website, which will allow you to kind of read through some of these safety codes that... Although they're not written in stone, there's something that you should follow uh, very closely. The construction, the motors, recovery, weight limits, it goes into all of it, firing your systems. Uh, make sure that you're not firing in any place that has a fire ban on. Uh, right now, where we want to launch, we can't launch until the fire ban is lifted. So it's definitely a good idea to... Um, you know, make sure that you read through this and make sure that you're doing things safely. Uh, also on their website, you can find uh, a great many other things from radio controls to general hobbies to model building. So go ahead, check it out. They've got a YouTube channel as well. So you can go and check out some more stuff from uh, their YouTube channel, which I would highly recommend. I'm subscribed to. I've been not only a customer, but helping them to promote their business for a number of years now through different ventures. And uh, this is a great little uh, way to get involved with the hobby, not only of 3D printing, but also of model rocketry, RC car building. As you guys know, we're doing the open RC project now. Uh, so there's a lot to take in. Now over here on Thingiverse, we've got a, just a ton of different model rocketry uh, things that we've looked up. All we did was type in Estes rockets, 
or a rocket, um, and that is E-S-T-E-S, -E rocket. And you can see there's multiple pages, there's multiple things that you can do. Uh, just having a quick peek here at some of the ones that, that they've got. Uh, I'll show you the one that we're actually doing um, as well. We are going to build this Arduino rocket launcher, I think. Arduino-based rocket launcher. Uh, this is by Chow2009. And uh, we, I really had a good look at it. It's an Arduino-based rocket launcher, so we're going to have some fun with that. There's a ton of stuff on this website. Like there, you would not believe when I, I thought I wasn't going to find a whole lot on rockets, uh, but there was a ton of stuff on rockets here. You can even print out the little plugs that go in the bottom. I'm out of here for another day. I hope you guys uh, are excited about this project that we're working on. I hope you like some of the behind the scenes stuff that we showed you today and we're going to have fun. We'll show you pictures of our launch uh, bay compared to a retail launch bay coming up uh, in the next episode. We're going to print that off and we're going to show you what that looks like. And then we are going to set all systems go, Thunderbirds are go, and we're going to launch these suckers up into the sky. We've got enough engines to do so. We've got rockets to send off. And until I see you guys next time, I hope that you enjoyed the show. Like, subscribe, and hit that uh, bell notification so you get... Uh, notified every time that we do a brand new episode. I know today's show was kind of short, but it's still 3D printing, and we always uh, try and keep you guys informed about 3D printing. Remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print. I'll see you guys Saturday night.